And we can now talk to National Party leader Judith Collins. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Corin. Now, Simon Bridges says he didn't vote for you. Is that awkward? No, not at all, actually. Um, Do you know what? It's a free vote in our caucus, and uh, there are no ramifications for anybody, and I think you can see that. Um, I've got him at number four. Yes, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't suggest a a team of unity, does it, when your former leader who led the party for a couple of years didn't want you as leader? Um, Well, I think he's very happy with me as leader now. (laughs) Well, his first choice, though, was Mark Mitchell, and obviously Mark Mitchell stood against you as well. I guess it just comes back to the point of of the difficulties that National has now in presenting a unified team. Oh, I'm not... That's nonsense, Corin. Um, Most most leadership changes in political parties have some form of vote, either one organised beforehand, before the caucus, or those held in the caucus. I have no problem at all. I have absolute confidence that Simon Bridges is very confident and uh, supporting of my leadership. He's going to do a great job at number four with foreign affairs and justice. He's got a lot on his plate to do that. Would you have preferred that he kept his view on who he voted for to himself, as many others do? No, I, I'm not going to say that because when I was asked who I voted for uh, with Todd and Simon, I was very direct and said I voted for Todd. I think we've got to have a culture in the National Party where people can be upfront and honest. I know Simon Bridges is very straightforward, and as am I, and I would much prefer that. I've got no problems dealing with Simon Bridges, and I think he's going to be doing a great job. Simon Bridges and Todd Muller, both with reasonably high positions on your front bench, and I see Simon Bridges this morning already uh, making some comments in the New Zealand Herald suggesting in relation to Todd Muller's uh, leadership coup that uh, he, Simon Bridges says, we wasted a bit of time. So, I mean, there's already a bit of sniping there. Oh, I don't know, it's sniping. Um, look, I think it's very important that everybody moves on. I want, um, I don't like seeing former leaders who have been chosen by the caucus for their clearly leadership qualities and, and other qualities um, not respected in the way that I think that they should be. And we've got someone like Todd Muller, who is, I think, one of the nicest people in politics and very highly qualified in the trade area. And then we've got someone like Simon Bridges, who's a real little fighter, actually, and I just love that, and very straightforward to deal with, highly intelligent. Well, is the reality, the reality, you didn't have much choice that you had to put them on your front bench because you've lost 12 uh, uh, MPs, many of them very senior, two in one day. People are are, are leaving in droves. Corin, I have always had choices. That is a fabulous team. Do you know what? I'm just so proud of them, and the choices I had, the hardest choices, was who I couldn't put into that top 20 because there were so many people, actually, who deserved to mm. be there and I just can't find OK, but you, you also had a choice with Amy Adams because she said she would have stayed if you'd given her the COVID-19 advisory role. Why didn't you work harder to keep her? Because we don't need a COVID-19 advisory role, although I did offer, as you are very much aware from Amy, um, very good position and very good portfolios. She had already announced her retirement last year. I respect her decision. She's a good person. I just wish her so so much um, happiness in the future. And I think, you know, just just get on with it. I'm happy with the team. I'm happy with the lineup. That's my decision. Um, And that's what a leader does. Okay. If we look at housing, why is housing so far down at 14? Uh, Jackie Dean, relatively, well, she's got some experience, but not not in a major portfolio. Can I tell you, um, Jackie Dean um, at 14, uh, that's a cabinet position. Uh, Look, Jacinda Ardern had Phil Twyford with housing, so how could you take it seriously when Labour had it? And now it's with Megan Wood. She's got about every other portfolio that Chris Hipkins doesn't have. Um, How's that ever going to get any traction? We've got some great people, and I'm very happy that I've got someone so experienced. Okay, well, well on housing, well, I guess people will be looking for an indication of where National will go with housing after your last nine years. I mean, do you agree with Nicola Willis, who was the housing spokesperson, I think, last mm-hmm. week even, yeah. uh, who said there was a, that, that you hadn't built enough state houses, that there was a net loss of state houses during National's last term, and that, and that that was a mistake? Yes, she is absolutely right. Absolutely right. And I'd also say, too, is that we waited too long um, with housing to get those 
things in place. But I can tell you this, when we left office, there were fewer than 5,000 families on the safe house waiting list. Now there's over 15,000. So whatever Labor's done, they've done a lot worse. So you acknowledge that that was a, a mistaken policy, uh, the, well, the policy of giving or selling state houses to those community providers, is that something that you would continue to do? Absolutely, that is a good thing to do. I believe in So where was the housing, mistake then? The mistake was not being able to actually execute enough houses being built fast enough to replace those that were being uh, removed or actually taken out of the... Um, they say, uh, the social housing pool. We're okay. also so the party that put in place Housing First, Corrin. Okay, but if we put aside Kiwi right. Build, which I think we can all agree it, it didn't go well, Would you? will you commit, and people will be interested in this, will you commit to Labour's programme of state home building? The, the number, no. 6,500 promised, they're, they're, they're roughly hitting about 5,000 over this term as well. I'm going to commit to social housing, whether it's owned by community housing providers in places like Masterton, where I've seen it working really well, or it's owned by the what we all remember as Housing New Zealand or Kayangora. Um, it doesn't matter to me about that. What matters to me is, are people being properly housed? Is the landlord doing the job they're supposed to do? And by the way, how can we get more people into either private housing as well, but also into their own home? Kiwi Build shouldn't just be dismissed as a failure. It was a $2 billion flagship policy of an incoming Labour government, and they completely messed it up. OK. Infrastructure. You've got a big announcement due today on this. I know you're probably not going to reveal the details to me. Well, you're welcome to if you want to this morning. Oh, really, Corrin? Oh, you're so tempting. <laughs> uh, oh, but no. listen, what I am interested in is hmm. what assurances can you give around how you will fund that? I mean, this is going to you, you're going to be borrowing similar levels to what the current government is borrowing on, on capital expenditure? Uh, you'll just have to wait and see, Corrin. You are trying to tempt me into revealing this, and it will be out to this morning. Um, I also have um, Paul Goldsmith with me, the finance spokesperson. I can tell you, Paul is always watching not only the pennies but also the pounds. Mm. What about uh, what about other mechanisms? I know you've ruled out tax increases, uh, but will you look and uh, will you look at things like congestion charging, other ways of raising revenue if you're going to build more roads and infrastructure? Yeah, I'm not going to fall for this temptation that you're placing in front of me, Corin. We have to wait. All right. Well, let's talk about let's talk <laughs> about some policies that were announced yesterday. Mm-hmm. Paul Goldsmith uh, revealing that you would not continue with, or you would stop the contributions to the New Zealand Super Fund. Yes, while we're in, we're going through this very difficult economic crisis, it doesn't make sense to anybody who's ever even run a business. Uh, like I have, or a household like most New Zealanders have, to go and borrow money to effectively put it on a share market. Well, when you go, when governments you're are nothing like households, are they? They've got huge balance sheets, they've got a taxpayer base, we've got a triple A credit rating, or double A credit rating, they're nothing like households. And the argument is that if you had have continued contributions, uh, when you cut them last time, the rate of return on the New Zealand Super Fund was nearly 10%, it would have made billions. Yes, governments are not like households in that way. Governments have to be far more responsible than your average household because we have to be responsible for everybody in this country and generations' worth of debt. So, But you also have a responsibility no... to continue to pay New Zealand superannuation and without that fund building up, we will struggle to pay for the baby boomers' retirement. But we haven't seen that at all, actually, have we? Um, no matter what we do, no matter what people think about it, the fact is is that we can always start them back again. That's no problem. The fact is, right at the moment, we need to be very assured, and the people need to be very assured, we're not going to be borrowing what we don't need to borrow because someone has to pay it back. And that's not just you and me, Corin. It's our children and our grandchildren. And it's not fair to do that unless we know that we're going to invest for their future. National Party Leader Judith Collins, thank you very much for your time.